Hi. Today we will talk about distal radial access. So let's get right to it. We already know that radial should be your default method for cardiac cath. It is more comfortable for the patient, there is less bleeding, better outcomes. But why distal radial access? Well, there are two chief reasons. First, it is more ergonomic. Take left distal radial access, which is the preferred side for patients with Lima bypass grafts or anyone above age 75. If you place a conventional radial access into the left, it will be somewhat uncomfortable to secure the wrist for the patient during the case. The wrist may end up like this or even worse, pronate like this, effectively hiding the sheath from you. With distal radial access, the hand can be laid and secured prone over the body with the easy access to the sheath and more comfort for the patient. But there's something else. After conventional radial access, early occlusion rates are at approximately 8%. Data so far suggests that with distal radial access, the radial occlusion rates are much lower. Let me show you something. Here is the distal radial artery within the anatomic snuff box. It is a little smaller in diameter than the radial artery proper, but it is still between 2 to 2.6 millimeters in diameter typically. Here is the distal radial artery demonstrated in a different way, and you can see that even if it were to become occluded after catheterization, the radial artery proper will still provide flow to the superficial palmar arch. Placing a radial sheath at this location will generally not be met by tortuosity. As you can see there, it is a straight shot. Here we're prepping a left distal radial for access. The wrist anatomical snuff box is facing upwards. I find that asking the patient to tuck their thumb under is rarely necessary. Here we have draped the area and are ready to go. Ultrasound should be utilized for every distal radial artery access. There is the vessel quite clear to see. A modest amount of lidocaine is all that is required. And you can use the ultrasound to guide your local infiltration. Here we are attempting access and you can see that our fellow is directing the needle towards the center of the distal radial artery. This, by the way, is the first time our fellow is attempting this procedure and is doing a great job. Once Seldinger technique access has been obtained, the micro wire is able to be advanced quite smoothly and it can be confirmed via fluoroscopy, as you can see here. A sheath is inserted very smoothly, and we are ready to begin. Now there are a number of dedicated distal radial access hemostasis devices available. Here are a few examples. However, you can perform a radial access procedure completely with conventional radial equipment. Here we use a TR band and if you have problems with the device sliding you can place a gauze under it to secure it better. Now the idea that the distal radial artery is not large enough to support a sheath is simply not the case. A Korean study demonstrated that the average distal radial artery diameter in women is 2.4 millimeters and in men 2.65 millimeters. If you look at the body of the sheath, in this case the 6 French, 
for this manufacturer, it is 2.2 millimeters in diameter, more than enough to perform most procedures through. And these are conventional radial artery sheaths. So in summary, distal radial access is both more ergonomic and is associated with lower rates of radial artery occlusion. You can utilize the very same equipment, but you must remember, just like you would with a regular radial case, to give a radial cocktail. And that includes heparin and verapamil and or nitroglycerin. Thank you very much for your attention.